Hey there, Becky here from Inside the Square, and welcome back to my channel. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you some creative ideas for the pagination on your Squarespace blog. Pagination are those links at the bottom of the blog post that take you to the previous and next article. While it's great to have that feature built into Squarespace, we don't have a lot of customization options, and that's why I like to use some creative codes. In this tutorial, I'll be teaching you how to change the color, the icon style, how to add a little bit of text, and very importantly, how to stack those links on mobile so that they don't become super squished and they're still easy to use. All the codes I'm about to share are listed in the description below, but I'd love to teach you exactly how to use these codes in Squarespace, so I'll go ahead and share my screen so we can get started. Here we are inside Squarespace looking at a blog, and I'm going to click on the second article so we can see both the previous and next article links on the bottom. These are pagination links, and here is our to-do list for this tutorial. One of the first things I want to do is change the font for these pagination links, and for that, we don't need code. You can navigate to your site styles menu, select the font option, and click on assign styles. This opens the secret font menu for all kinds of things on your Squarespace website. I'm going to scroll down here until I see blog post. I'll highlight this in the video real quick. And here we can see pagination. If I click into pagination, I can assign this a custom font. They can have it match your paragraph, heading, or miscellaneous fonts you already have assigned or select custom. When you choose custom, you can choose any font family you want. These are fonts I currently have installed on my site, but I can select browse all fonts and grab anything from the Squarespace font library that I want to use for my pagination links. Now for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm gonna go ahead and go back to Poppins because that's my favorite font. But at the very bottom of the list, I'm gonna change this size so it's a little bit bigger. I think paragraph one sounds good. That looks awesome. We're gonna go ahead and go with that. Now one last time how we got here, starting in our main site styles menu, click on the font option and select assign styles. This is your hidden font menu where you can see a list of all kinds of things on your Squarespace website. Scroll all the way down to blog post and you'll be able to select pagination and customize it from there. All right, I'll go ahead and select save and exit because we've got more to do today, my friend. We're going to add some text above these links to say previous and next articles. And to do that, we'll add custom code. On the left-hand side of my screen here, I'm going to select pages, then website tools, and then custom CSS. Here, I'm going to paste a code that you'll find in the description below. Let me zoom in on my screen here so you can see it. There we go. Now that we've added this code, you can see that we've added text previous article and next article above our pagination links. Now you can customize this even more, changing the style of that specific font so it's unique. I'm going to add a semicolon here and I'm going to say font size. We'll make this 12px. Actually, how about 15? So it's a little easier to see. There we go. And let's go ahead and say text transform uppercase. Perfect. And how about we add some letter spacing? How about letter spacing 5px to separate out those characters a little bit? Awesome, that looks a lot more unique. Now you can see we have the previous article and the next article. Now I want you to notice this first part of the code is what's creating the style and adding the text previous article. This next line of code down here is where we've added the text next article. The only part of this code that we're changing is the text. It's gonna keep the same formatting as all of this other stuff up here. We can also do creative things like maybe change the color of the font. Let's add a semicolon and make the font a bright red. There we go. Previous and next article labels have now been added to our pagination. I'll go ahead and select save and let's continue with the rest of our to-do list. We need to change the color of the background for our pagination, the color of the font, and the color of the icon. I'm going to add a new line of code and here I'm going to say background. Let's go with a web safe color name of pink. Instantly, we can see the background color has been added to just the pagination links. The article itself hasn't been changed. Let's go ahead and switch this up to a hex color code that I like, a nice light blue. There we go, super customizable. Now I'll select save, and to change the color of the font and the icon, we'll need to hop into our site styles menu again. You don't need code to do this. Clicking on this paintbrush icon here, I can hop into my color menu, and instantly Squarespace will tell me I'm using the lightest one color theme. Do you see that right here? This lets me know that I can edit lightest one to edit the style of this page. Clicking on this option, we'll see a long list just like we did for our fonts. And I want to scroll all the way down. 
a little bit further past the list sections, past the video items, into the blogs. Here we go. Blog post. Here we have blog post pagination title, meta, and icon. Let's go ahead and change the title to a different color. We can choose that blue or this vibrant yellow or heck, let's click into custom colors and go over a vibrant purple. Awesome. A completely different color that we've customized using our color theme. We can also change the post pagination icon. Clicking the circle right here, I can grab any color that I want and that will change up the color of the arrow right there in my pagination links. Now let's say we like this style, but we actually want to change the arrow to something completely different. Let's go ahead and do that next. I'll save our changes so far. We'll select exit and we'll be right back here in our custom CSS panel. Now, in case you lost your place, let me show you one last time. Here from our main menu, you can select pages, then website tools, then custom CSS. That's how you reach your custom CSS panel. All right, let's go ahead and change the icon to our own image. I'm going to click on custom files at the very top of my CSS panel here so I can upload the images that I want to use for my arrows. I'll select the two images for my computer. You can also drag and drop them right here into this space and they'll be uploaded to Squarespace so I can use them in my code. All right, we'll add a new line of code and instantly we'll see that the arrows have disappeared. Now we've got a little bit more to change here. We need to replace this text with the URL for the one of the images that we've uploaded. Let's go ahead and start with our previous pagination link first. I'll remove that placeholder text and I'll select arrow left. I want the arrow that points to the left. There we go. It's been added, but it's not totally visible. So we need to make room for it by adding a new line of code that says width 180%. There we go. Now this width value, that's going to be different for your unique image style. If you have an image that's the same ratio as the arrow, you probably won't need that code. But I'm using a perfect square image, so I needed to increase the width just a little bit. Now that we've added that code and we can see the arrow here, I want you to notice the arrow on the right hand side is the same one and that's not the arrow we want to use. We need to replace that one. So we're going to add a new line of code that again, you'll find in the description below. I'll remove this placeholder text and we'll add our arrow right. And there we go. We now have our own icon being used for the blog post pagination. I'll go ahead and select save because we've got one last thing to do and that is to stack these on mobile and let me show you why. As soon as we look at the mobile view, you can see these are running into each other and they don't look great. Let's go ahead and fix that with some custom code. We've got one final piece of code that I'll paste right here. And this is going to stack those pagination links on mobile. So we have the left on the top and aligned with the left. And we have the right on the bottom aligned with the right. Let's go ahead and select save. And I'm going to click through to the next article so you can see here that those changes have been implemented on every blog post inside this blog. We now have the custom background. We have the text above and below. We have the unique icon and it's visible on both desktop and mobile versions. Definitely some fun stuff to play with today. Now, let's say you do have more than one blog on your site and you want all of this code to only apply to that individual blog. Let me show you how to do that. I'm going to remove this code from our custom CSS. We'll select save and refresh the page and those links will go back to being boring links that do have the custom colors we assigned using our font menu, but that's about it. So let's go ahead and add our code back to this blog. Navigating to our main pages menu here, I'm going to click the gear icon for my individual blog and I'll select advanced. Our very last option is post blog item code injection. This is going to add code to the individual blog posts that only exist in this blog. Clicking on this option, I need to type the word style between left and right angled carrots here because the browser can have more than one type of code in this code injection. I have to tell it, hey, this is a style code I'm about to give you. So we've added our style brackets. I'll paste the whole code we had inside our custom CSS. I'll select save. The website will refresh and there they are, those beautiful arrows we picked the text we added, the custom color we gave to that text. And you'll see not only can we click through from previous to next articles, but on mobile, they're going to be stacked just like they were when we added this code to our site-wide CSS. So again, you'll click the gear icon, you'll select advanced, and you'll add this code to post blog item code injection if you only need these styles on one unique blog on your Squarespace website. 
If you only have one blog, you don't need to follow those steps. Just navigate to Website Tools, select Custom CSS, and paste all of the code here. And again, you'll find this code in the description below. Underneath this video, you'll find all the codes that we used in this tutorial, as well as links to related content. So if you'd like to learn more about customizing Squarespace, definitely check those out. Thank you so much for watching this video. I truly hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a like and let me know in the comments. And most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now. If you liked this tutorial, then you are going to love my Squarespace CSS cheat sheet. I've created a Notion database to hold all of the selectors for everything I want to modify on a Squarespace website. I've packed it with pro tips and custom code snippets that you can use to make your Squarespace website uniquely yours. Get access to this game-changing database at insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS. That's insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS.